In his 1935 masterpiece, Black Reconstruction, Du Bois made a striking claim. Du Bois characterized abolition as a labor movement and held that U.S. history would have been fundamentally altered had the anti-slavery forces been united with movements of free white wage workers. For Du Bois, the failure of these two labor movements to recognize one another squandered the chance to build a labor democracy and set the United States on the road to plutocracy. Nancy Fraser's upcoming Benjamin Lectures extend Du Bois' idea to the present and to the rest of the world. Given the persistence of dependent and expropriated labor, Nancy Fraser asks, can the anti-racist and anti-imperialist struggles of our era be usefully viewed as unrecognized labor struggles? And if so, why stop there? Can we view feminist movements, too, as unacknowledged struggles over work in systems built on a gendered separation of paid productive labor from unpaid care work? Elaborating these hypotheses, Nancy Fraser argues in this year's Benjamin Lectures that capitalist societies rely on three analytically distinct but mutually imbricated forms of labor, exploited, expropriated, and domesticated. The relationships between these three faces of labor under capitalism uncovers the hidden ties among gender, race, and class. Disclosing those hidden ties, Nancy Fraser evaluates the prospects for uniting not two, but three labor movements. I would say that we're living in a moment of very acute crisis, societal crisis, in which um, lots of, of contradictions and, and societal impasses are converging. The crisis has an economic dimension, it has a, a care dimension, a social reproduction crisis, an ecological dimension, a, a work dimension, a political dimension. So there is understandably an interest in, in widening the lens beyond economics in the narrow sense. And, what I've been doing over uh, the last several years has been to try to develop a conception of capitalism that looks not only at the economy, but at its relation to its background conditions, including the relation of unfree labor, the relation of unwaged care work. <laughs> We don't have one designated agent of emancipation that we could call the working class uh, in that, at least in that narrow sense. We have feminist movements, we have anti-racist and anti-imperialist movements, ecological movements, and more traditional labor movements. My sense is that in a, the kind of crisis we uh, have now, where these issues are not neatly separated from one another, it's very important to think about how these movements might connect to one another. None of them is sufficiently powerful to make social change of a, of a deep nature alone. They have to find some way to cooperate. What's at stake is the um, possibility of seeing how far one can get by taking this expanded labor lens beyond uh, uh, commodity producing uh, wage labor and see how, we can, how far we can clarify both the structural nature of our society, but also the prospects for change, 